Okay, in this video uh, I want to talk a little bit about digitizing fonts. There are different ways that we can digitize a font and Inkstitch has got pre-digitized fonts but we often, if we get a logo from somebody, uh, their font is not available or we cannot find a matching font. So we will go and manual digitize the text what is needed. So and there is different ways that we can go about it. And I hope I can show in this video uh, on how you can go about uh, a different ways on how you can create those satin stitches or close to a satin stitch. Because the way these, so I typed in here uh, a few uh, serif and just a straight Arial font. So just a few simple letters and if you run them in the ink stitch extension into the params, then what we will get is we will get an automatically routed fill stitch. And that does not always give us the satisfied look and quite often because of the width of the stitches it is often that uh, we get a lot of needle penetrations and the stitch out is not really the way it should be. So, and if you now look in, at a, in a simulator quickly, so I'll speed this up and go to the realistic view. And as you can see, we do not get quite a nice look on, on the stitching. There are a few little things what we can change. So, what we can do is we can go and have them selected and in the params we could go and we could go and change the fill stitch length say I'm gonna set that uh, I don't know exactly how uh, big my ladders are uh, but I'm gonna go and set this at a high number here for a moment and so that you can see what is going to happen afterwards. So I'm just setting it at 30. And here we see the stagger rows this many times before repeating. And I'll set that to 1. And then I also want to check my underlay. And the underlay, it has an inset. So I want to change my inset to 0.2. Sometimes it might even be better a uh, touch higher, but I'll go and apply and quit. And now we'll go and extension, ink stitch, and we go to the simulator. That's always an important part and take your time, uh, play it through the simulator and go and have a look at your realistic view. And now you can see already this looks already way more like the satin stitch. We see along the edges that doesn't really look as nice and that is because the way the fill stitch is going to go from the one stitch to the to the next stitch there is always a little uh, a short stitch in there but this could give a fairly nice effect already. So that is a big step already, but now we want to go and uh, perfect it and we want to go and make it way better yet. So in order to do that, there is different ways that we can do it. So now we have to make a planning. Uh, let me first go to the simple one. This one is pretty straightforward. This is a straight leg up, straight leg down, and straight horizontal vertical. So what we can do is, 
with a Bezier tool or with a freehand line tool. We want to start, say we want to start over here. And I'm drawing a line here. And then my second one, I want to go here from the bottom. Uh, so I'm drawing my line in the center. And then we want to go and a satin line from the top to the bottom. So now I have my line. I can go and select each line. And I can go here with a mouse. I can scroll my my wheel or till I'm fairly close to what I need. Select that one. Set it to 2 mil. And that one I can go and set that one to 2 mil. Now I can go and select all three of them. And I can go extension, ink stitch, satin tools, convert line to satin. Oh, okay. Uh, the reason because I went and selected uh, when I draw the box around it also my leather what is in behind there was selected so I should uh, change that for a moment yeah so that is the leather what uh, was underneath there so I turn the visibility off on that one or I can lock it in place that way it still stays there that might be the best so now I got it selected and now I go extension ink stitch convert line to satin and as you can see the lines are not perfectly lined up with uh, the text that is okay uh, what I'll I'll select them all once more and I like to have my line width fairly narrow so then I can line it up a little better also what can be done is we can turn on the snapping that is like magnetism and then we will go into the node select and now I can drag my nodes and put them into the corners where I would want them and that is satisfactory uh, this one what I want to do here is uh, because this one I want to have as first one so that one needs to go better in place yet and I can line them up then I want to have this one sewn and this one I want to continue up to the top corner so what I'll do here is I'll add an extra node and I will drag now I may want to go and turn snapping off now I can freely manipulate it and now that I'm happy with that now I can go and select them all extension ink stitch per amps and then we have the custom satin column and then we can change our setting on the density and the six so that would be the six x spacing if you decrease this number say I'm gonna go here to uh, the point two and then you will see that the one stitch is longer and the next stitch is shorter and the reason for that is because the short stitch distance number is higher than the six x spacing so what we then do is we bring this down 
that that number is lower than the 6x spacing. And now you can see all the stitch lengths are all the way to the end again. So then we can go and apply and quit. Then we can go select them and we can go extension ink stitch satin tools and then outer route satin column and if I want to preserve the order that it starts this one first uh, I did not double check if I created them in that order yes I did I did create this one first then this one and then that one so I want to preserve the order of the satin columns and now I go and apply and then I can close out of here and now you can see that ink stitch has created a running stitch in here a running stitch here and a running stitch there and if we now go and run it through the simulator visualize and export simulator and there you can see that we have a satin stitch on the ladder. So that is fairly simple. Okay, so that is uh, now I'll select all of oh select all of it. Come on now. Why doesn't it? Oh, I see. I gotta be the have the mouse on the line. I was not on the on the ladder itself. So that is one way of doing it. Then another way that it can be done is now that we have this ladder, we can break it apart in some ways and what can be done is grab the bezier tool and then I have snapping turned on and oh I have to turn the lock back on or turn the lock off so now I have my bezier tool and I'll start drawing and I go in maybe I should zoom in a little more I'm going there to the corner and then I snap to the corner over there. Then I snap to that corner, this corner, and back to that point. And then I have my line or shape. I select it. So now it is selected. And I hold down the shift key. And I'm selecting my ladder. And I go path uh, division and now you can see I have two boxes oh it did not divide I have the two boxes so they are selected and then path division it's not why is it not oh it is a no it says a path text extension oh uh, path object to path this one and shift path division for some reason something is not working I did it earlier and I did not have any issues whatsoever so this is a little strange let me go and put it in the in the same layer maybe that is a problem 
So I'll select this, uh, what I drew here, this line, and then draw, select the uh, ladder, and then we go path division. There we go. So as you can see, it makes a difference uh, if it is in a layer. Oh, everything is, this is groups. And if it was in a layer, it probably was okay. So I'll, I'll come back on that in a moment. So now we have this piece uh, selected out. And I'll change the color on that so that we can see, as you can see, that becomes a separate part now. Then what we can do again with the Bezier tool, I go and draw around here on where I want to make my split and here I'll turn off the the bezier or the the snapping for a moment there I want to be right in a corner and I can close this shape again select it by pressing the space bar and I'll select the rest of the leather path and division and now you can see too, uh, let me give that a different color. Now I have that one as a shape. And I have this one as a separate shape. So now we can start working with these, these parts and pieces. And now we can go and select all three of them. We can turn off the fill and we can give it a stroke. I'll, uh, I'll give it a stroke and I'll turn down my stroke size here for a moment. And sometimes it is easier to give uh, different parts a different color to work with. That way it becomes easier to see which one you're working with and which one has been dealt with but can keep it the same then what we'll do is I'm taking here the node select tool and I'm starting here with this center little piece then I'm gonna go here because this is a full shape I'm deleting the segment and I delete the end segment over there and now I'm selecting this segment and I will go path reverse so now both uh, both rails are going the same direction now I can go I'll select this one and I'm selecting now the end segment delete that segment and I'll take this one right away too. Have that one selected. You can see the nodes, they have changed color. So the segment is selected. And I'll delete that one. And do here the same. Delete segment. And there. Delete segment. Oh. First have to make sure that it is selected on the first click. You selecting the object on a second uh, click. You selecting the the segment, and then what needs to happen yet is one of the rails needs to be reversed and reverse. And here that one path reverse and this one I'm not 100% sure if if I did it properly it's sometimes it's really hard to see the the direction arrows on it but that's okay now what will have to happen is because the auto conversion it automatically creates the rails with it so 
and we don't want to go and start counting all the nodes if all parts and pieces have the same amount of nodes so what now will have to happen is we'll create some uh, rungs and we can make as many rungs as we want or oh, or very few then we go and select them hold down the shift key and select the parts path and then we go combine and I'll turn the width down so that is one part these two they have the same amount of nodes but uh, I'll just go and create one they are also turn my line way down select it hold, uh, hold down the shift key select that part and path combine and then we create a few more for the last part and hold down the spacebar shift key select them and then path combine and the the line width the stroke width doesn't matter but I find it it's nicer looking when the line widths are all a little narrower and then what we can do is we can select all three of them and then we can go extension ink stitch params there is a possibility that it may look funny I'm not 100% sure on on that yet but we'll find out in a hurry custom set and column and as you can see the the order needs to be changed yet because it did this one first and then it did this one so the order needs to be changed yet and then here the settings they can be changed again and then we can go apply and quit so we know that it is the satin stitching is working but we want it in a different order so then what we do is we select this one first hold down the shift key select the outside one and now select the last one then we go extension ink stitch edit restack objects in order of selection and then if you want to you can go and you can group it group them together so that way if you select anything as you can see you're selecting right away the whole group that then in order to select parts inside your group you have to hold down the control key and now you can select the individual part inside the group but what you can also do is now that it has been grouped you can also go select it uh, again as a group and then you can go group to layer so now and you can see that here on the label this is a, a layer and here you can see that there is a little bit uh, different and that is a group and once it is in a layer now it doesn't matter where it is I can select it at any time and I can just select any piece at any time and make changes to individual parts and pieces but when it is grouped 
everything stays more locked together. So that depends a little bit on your preferences also. So that is a way you can do it. And then there is another way yet. And that is just go and grab your Bezier tool and create all your individual rails and create your rung and then go and oh I I want to keep that A in place so I'll go and lock that one for a moment so now we cannot make any changes to that A so now I can go and drag over top and I can go path combine extension ink stitch params and select the satin column and as you can see there we have the satin column so the direction on where to start and where it finishes uh, that can be handy to know because uh, normally I always go and create my own running stitches because uh, what sometimes happens is that if you use the auto satin it will not give always the right uh, running stitches so I like to create it myself and that's why I run them through the uh, in the params I watch where it finishes the stitching and then I create create the running stitch and that is just by dragging a line and say then I'm going to the corner and then I change the stroke style to a dashed line and then we have our running stitch then we can go extension ink stitch params and we can go apply and quit or we should uh, change the the tie-ins and a tie out yet but I'm not gonna go through all that right now then we can so now that uh, we have that running stitch uh, it depends on where it's gonna start on the bottom again but now we can create our rail again and here same create my rail and I create my my rungs oh. and now I go select or if I select the red one first then everything is gonna have the same red color it depends on which one you select first and uh, so now I have all four selected path combine oh I had the other day and I did a different but that's okay that doesn't really matter then uh, what we'll do is uh, then what I do is in the end select all of it and then I group it anyway and or put it in its own layer and then I will go and give it all the same color so and then the last rail uh, so now you may have to watch it because if we putting the mouse on top of one of those nodes it will connect to one of those nodes and the rail will continue so you may have to start the first one uh, a little bit higher and well we can go right to the bottom and then enter so and then may have to then you can for that matter delete that node and this one can be placed better and then we do the other rail start in the corner 
and we start there our finish there create our rungs again and select them hold down the shift select all four of them and then path combine and then extension ink stitch params and then custom set and column apply and quit and I think I applied all of them but we'll find out in a hurry extension uh, oh uh, I should change the all the same color for a moment so now they're all the same color and then we go extension ink stitch visualize simulator so then we can check if uh, any mistakes have been done and as you can see uh, you get this because what was forgotten is to apply the params on the satin column over here so that's why it is always important to run it through the simulator so we close out of here and select this rail extension ink stitch params and we go to the satin column and we go apply and quit and if we now select them you will find out that they should all be working correctly now and there you can see too that with a running stitch going here and over here uh, it started over here again and then just a short uh, little jump would be here in the top and if you want to visualize that you can just let that scroll back with the So now watch the next step and as you can see there it's uh, made a tiny little or that was the last spot and then it made a little jump across and it started stitching down onto the bottom. And if you want to have some more overlap here you can just like that and you can manipulate a few of the nodes to make that that better. Okay, so this would be the stitch out on that one. And so now, so this is simple, uh, simple creation. Here also with a small a, uh, you have to make a little bit of a planning there too on, hey, how am I going to go? So this would be one section and this would be a section. And you can see this is wider than what it is over here. So you can do that different ways. You can do that by breaking that leather apart and uh, I like going toward the inside because otherwise you may get uh, loose nodes uh, showing up and you don't want that so I always go toward the inside for a moment and then doesn't matter how far you go around it and then select it and I think I went and brought it made it to a path and if it doesn't work it's probably because it is still in a group path division and as you can see that doesn't want to work because just like what we had with the previous one it is not in the in the same layer as you can see it was the text group so I would have to take it out of there and I can put it in this layer and then path uh, division no it still didn't why not shift path 
division. Okay. I just had to deselect for a moment and reselect. So that is one thing you have to keep an eye on it. Uh, that your text, that it becomes ungrouped. Uh, then it will work right away to break it apart. So now you can see that that part is separated from that part. And now we can go the same thing again. We can go and select it. Turn off the fill. And give it a st oh, turn off the fill. Give it a stroke. Turn the stroke width down. And deselect for a moment. And now we go to the note select. And there again, we can see there's uh, the end path that it is now selected. Take the end path away. And we go and select a line segment, path, reverse. And now we go and select that one. And as you can see here, uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So it has the same amount of nodes. So this one, that should be working the way it is. And we can do that check it right away, params. And we got a running stitch along the path. So we go here to the satin column. And as you can see, we have there the satin column. And here you can see right away that we also getting the, the short stitches. And because it is a really sharp corner, we may want to even keep some of the short stitches uh, in order to uh, relieve some some needle penetrations uh, right along the outside edge. And we can set also how far we want those short stitches away from, so that would be 15% from the width. And if we think that is too much, then we can go and change that to a smaller value. And now the short stitch distance is a little less, because otherwise if you set it to zero, you would get a lot of needle penetrations here right along the edge. So that is why that short stitch inset is there. And so then we go apply and quit. And now we can go here with this one too. We can go and check how many nodes there are. And this side, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there is a difference in the number of nodes. And sometimes you don't get quite the control with uh, the nodes in order to change the stitch direction. So I'll delete there the end uh, segment. And then I can see which direction I want to go. That doesn't really matter. I can start this one path reverse. And now both paths are going the same direction. Now we just need to create a few of the rungs again, because the rungs, they control the, the stitch direction. And that should work. And hold down the shift key, then you don't have to Okay, now they are all selected again, then path, combine, and now I'll make sure that everything, oh, I first have to apply the params, ink stitch params. That is one thing. Uh, when you do these kind of creations, uh, you always have to go and apply the, the params because it will not automatically go to the satin column. 
only the simple lines what you convert have ink stitch convert them to a satin column they will automatically go into the satin column function in here so now you can change the settings again point two and we can that one and then we go apply and quit so yeah and then for, especially for in the really sharp corners uh, you want to keep uh, a short stitch uh, setting so you don't get too many needle penetrations in a small area so and then make sure that you set the right color on all of them the one looks brighter than the other one but I'll just make sure try once more the one must have a okay the one is an 80% opacity and that one is 60% so that doesn't really matter but uh, let's make it look the same that should be the same and it may look a little different because the the line width looks different okay and then you can apply the the outer out uh, running stitch or you can go and create your own running stitch in there also okay so that is uh, two letters or that's three letters and now a leather like this uh, I don't think I'm gonna go through the the whole uh, leather all the way but here with the the bottom parts we want to stitch them left to right and right to left and here the same from left to right part way or maybe this one can go uh, all the way across because if we starting here we do not want this in one piece because then we would get a jump or the running stitch would be over top so we want that this part has to be split in two sections and that is uh, some of the text they will have here on top of a, bo uh, a bar also so we all want to do that differently but here too again uh, exactly the same principle as what I did with all the other ones uh, let me see okay that one is not in uh, in a group so I should be good to go so I take my lines again and create a spacebar select it hold down the shift path division so that one is divided and then I go take my Bezier tool again and I want to turn the snapping off for that one I want to be here fairly close on the on the bottom and then I want to go straight across and I go around it and then s select it oh why select it shift path division and as you can see that is a separate part and in order to show that it is separate I'll uh, change uh, quickly a few of the colors then you can see where it where it has been changed and so then this one too you have to decide on uh, how you want to split that one and I'll start here then go into my corner and then I want to go across and 
I'll go you have to go around it all the way because if you're going across then it will cut it into pieces so you want to make sure that that you're going across shift path division and then we have to make one more here and once you it seems like time consuming but once you get in the hang of it then it goes pretty good and then select oh select that one shift path division and also for a lot of these things there are shortcuts uh, I'm not uh, using the shortcuts because uh, that way you can see where I'm clicking on it within the program so you can go and look the, uh, the shortcuts they are all beside it and like I say it depends on how you like to work with with all the tools and okay oh I gave it a stroke and so now you can see there we have uh, our different sections and like I said this one we should should be split yet so there is also that can be done also again with the Bezier tool and we want to split it yeah in the corner where the next one can start again so and then hold the space bar and the shift key and then path uh, division so now we have all the all the parts and pieces uh, let me see there you can see now I have broken it up in one two three four five six six parts and pieces and so now if I want to work with it in a certain uh, in a certain layer I can go and I can go and group this and then go and put it in a layer so let's go and do that group it and then right click on it again group to layer so now I have all those pieces they are in its own layer and that one I can delete and that one I can delete also so now I have as soon as I select that then I have right away everything I'm working inside that layer so if I'm making convert this all into the uh, into the satin columns and then have the outer satin run it will automatically do it within the layer if I would have had it in the in a group uh, then the running stitches what are going to be created or whatever gets created that can be outside the group so that can be uh, kind of annoying on finding all the parts and pieces and keep it organized so but now you can work with this and you can use it uh, say as a fill then if you're using it as a fill then you would also want to add all your uh, commands the fill commands and the, st the start command and the end command because you want to have it in a certain order and the order that you want that is where you want then your say a fill you would want to start it over here and then have it end over here and then create a running stitch do this bottom section 
So then the bottom section could be as uh, one full section. And then you would want to have the start point there where your running stitch ended and the finished point on where your next fill stitch is going to start again. And that is exactly the same as in a way for with the satin stitches. So yeah, here too again, exactly the same principle. Turn off the fill and set your uh, lines and remove the the line segments and convert it into the satins. So I hope that this is uh, helpful to a lot of you. Uh, there's a lot of information, lots of possibilities, but I know there are a lot of people and they are struggling with creating uh, nice satin stitches. A lot of you, they go and just make it as a fill, but we don't get the results. So that's why I went and made this video in order to assist you with the creation. Okay, thanks for watching and take care.